One, two, three, four. Yeah. All right, so I've got a problem. I've been in this business so long that every time they pointed at you and said, and you didn't respond, I'm like, oh, crap, it's a timeout. <laughs> It's like real-time yaying. So a few weeks ago, we were all, many of us, were at the IAB Leadership Summit in Miami. And um, I got up on stage with a bunch of my dearest friends, and I said, look, guys, we've really got to take a stand on piracy. We can't be, yeah, thank you. Completely agree with the one guy who clapped. Um, we all know that advertising funds a lot of the piracy we see online. And I think we all have an obligation to stop giving money to the folks that are actually facilitating this piracy. That's a little bit of a leadership stance, a little innovative. And in that vein, I'd like to invite up Mike Nolet, our CTO, who's one of the leading thinkers on what quality means to advertising. Mike and I are both wearing our wedding tuxes today. <laughs> it's true. It's his wedding tux. This is my wedding suit. Yeah, exactly. It was an accident. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Hey, I wish I could beatbox like that. Um, so today, I want to talk about, uh, on quality, how we're making a lot of short-sighted decisions, both as buyer-sellers. And I think everyone in this room here, this isn't just about piracy. It's much bigger than that. And I think we're actually leaving long-term value on the table. And we're, we're missing out on significant financial opportunities based on the decisions all of us make today. So I thought I'd start this by just stepping back and think about something, I think very few people here, we haven't heard this at all today, that actually in advertising, we're trying to show a relevant message to a real person, not a robot, right? And on real, unique content. What we're trying to do is engage with people and get them to buy goods, to like brands. And what I think we're starting to lose a little bit as we talk about programmatic buying and CPCs and CPAs and CTRs is the fact that we are trying to get relevant messages in front of real people. So how many people here, by the way, have seen their ad that their company is running on a real website in the last 24 hours? One guy. Seven days? A little more? In the last month? It's kind of depressing, right? So let's talk about this a little bit. So 
first, let me introduce the prisoner's dilemma. This is a, it's a common game theory concept. Um, and it's really about how when people are maximizing for their own short-term profit, you actually end up with an inefficient overall outcome. So basically, if two people act in self-interest, you get one outcome. If they were to collaborate, they would both be better off. So the game goes as follows. You've got two prisoners, uh, or two guys, they got arrested, uh, they robbed a bank, did something bad, and they're in two different interrogation rooms, and they're trying to decide, do they stay quiet, or do they tell, right? So do they tattle on the other guy and try to you know, get a plea bargain, get out of prison? And so the first guy says, look, if I confess, I get a plea bargain, I get out of jail free, my buddy gets 20 years, it's actually pretty good for me. The challenge is the other guy is actually saying the exact same thing. He says, if I confess, I get a plea bargain, and the other guy gets to go to jail. The problem is, if both of them confess, they both go to jail, because what's the leverage you have, right? You're, not, you're both actually confessing to the crime. And in fact, the two guys would be better off if they just kept quiet. They'd probably get kind of a little charge, you know, spend six months or a year or something like that in prison. So you're probably asking, what the hell does that have to do with online advertising? <laughs> Are we all going to prison? I hope not. No data stealing. Um, and so I think our obsession with short-term CPC, CPA, CTRs is actually one big example of the prisoner's dilemma. So basically, and I'm, let me to make this real for you, let's talk about the inventory that we currently choose to show ads on on exchanges. Who here knows Dragon Ball, manga? All right, a couple of people out here. Manga, these are Japanese uh, cartoons. Um, they're very popular, especially with the nerd crowd. So if you watch Game of Thrones, you might read some manga together with that. Um, and manga is uh, not often translated. So what people do is they get these manga cartoons, they scan them, they wipe out the Japanese text, and try to create derived work from this, and put it online on websites to read for free. Um, this isn't done by the publishers of the manga content. This is done by individual people. Um, and these sites are pretty damn big. Um, in fact, it's about, about a billion impressions a day that we see across all platforms. Everybody. This isn't like one, this isn't calling out any specific person. AppNexus, Google, every, everybody. Everybody has manga inventory. It's a billion ads a day. It's 5% of supply. It's a big number. So what happens is, you're reading this cartoon. Now, by the way, these pages, cartoons, you read pretty quickly. So you're going through pages quickly. Frequency is through the roof. Hundreds and hundreds of ad views for one unique user on one of these sites. That's so what happens is networks DSPs put an ad on the page. So here's Google AdWords advertising on manga here. I go on AdWords because I love buying advertising from Google. And what happens is the DSP gets post view credit. Right, so the credit for this conversion goes to the manga site. Now the thing is, there's, you only see one ad on this page. There's actually four at the bottom that you don't see. And how often do you think you're gonna scroll past the page that you actually read? There's actually five ads on this page, four of which you don't see at all. One you're probably not paying attention to. And here's the thing. I was, on, I was reading some manga on this, and I just saw every brand Every site I'd been to, I think, in the last week was actually advertising. It's all remarketing spend. I'm a Verizon customer. I love Zipcar. I bought one of these helmet cams. I have a city credit card. I rented my car with Avis. We're considering user voice for getting customer feedback. All of these guys are advertising. So every inventory source is doing this, and every buyer is doing this. Right? So you're still saying, why is this a case of the prisoner's dilemma? So actually, let me step back. So the problem is. These ads are not engaging, but they're getting credit, right? So we've got big publishers spending tons of time with hundreds of people trying to generate unique content. We have the newspaper industry going bankrupt, right? Because they can't make enough money, but they're actually generating real content. And these guys are just scanning something, writing some text and putting it online and getting advertising revenue, right? And this is what I call a case of the prisoner's dilemma. Because if one person were to stop, right? He actually gets lower ROI on the campaign because he doesn't get as much credit, and he's likely to lose the budget. If everybody were to stop, we'd actually have the money going to quality websites. Because you know, I love manga. I read the New York Times first in the morning, and then maybe I go read a little bit because I work. You know, I don't work very hard, so at the office I'm doing this all day, right? So credit is going the wrong place. If we stop doing, if we stop advertising there, credit starts going to real websites. These guys make more money. 
right? And we all know publishers are very afraid of programmatic buying an RTB, but they start pushing more inventory, and the pie gets bigger, and we all are better off, right? So one person stops, bad for him. Everybody stops, good for everybody. I think we can make more money if we stop showing ads on low-quality sites that don't have real, unique content. So let's talk about a second example. Um, I think every day we burn trust with our users a little bit. Right? So I don't know if you guys know this, but the more obnoxious the ad, the more likely someone is to click on it. So if you're going to advert optimize for a CPC, you, know, you make really annoying ads. Well, the problem is that also annoys users and make, makes users install tools like Adblock right? and try to actually avoid uh, ads they see on all these websites. So let's talk through an example of this that I saw recently. Who here reads Failblog? It's not manga, but it's hilarious. Oh, if you, I highly recommend it if you want to have a good laugh. So I was on Failblog, and I saw this ad. And it said, hey, estimate your credit score. And I was about to move to a new apartment, so I said, let's, let's click on it, and let's see what we get. And we see this landing page. And apparently, if I donate $1 to charity, I get to see three credit reports and three scores. Seems like a good deal. Everyone's heard of this government initiative around free credit reports, donating to charity. That's nice. Except if you zoom in, if I donate my dollar to charity, I also subscribe to a $29.95 a month service for credit monitoring. Right. So how many consumers do you think read that fine print right, and actually think that their donation to charity is going to result in $30 a month being charged to their credit card? And it turns out a lot of consumers don't read that fine print, sign up for this, and then end up paying a lot of money. And in fact, the guy who put this slide together for me is an AppNexus employee, was really happy that I was presenting this because he himself had done exactly this <laughs> and ended up with a credit monitoring service that cost him 100 bucks because it took him a couple months to figure out what was happening before he could cancel it. So why is this a game of the prisoner's dilemma? Oh, sorry. I have a couple more examples here. These are really classy ads. Um, Seriously, go on the internet. This is just, this is, there's a lot of these out there. Um, <laughs> Stephanie wanted to be my friend, which my wife was not happy about. Um, I was trying to watch a movie, and I really wanted to download it. And it turns out it was actually an ad, and I went to a landing page. And then I was super, super excited to be the millionth visitor to this website. And then it turns out I had to fill out 14 offers to get my free laptop. Um, this doesn't build trust with our users, right? And what this is doing, click-through rates are dropping. If you look over the last three years, click-through rates are going down. It's like less than 10% of people click. Why do people not click? Well, this shit, right? So <laughs> it's another case of the prisoner's dilemma. On any given individual impression, we maximize our revenue by showing these ads, right? By actually trying to kind of trick and mislead users into clicking and downloading these services. And if one SSP or, or network or vertical network, whatever you want, stops accepting these types of ads, he's going to actually get lower CPMs tomorrow, right? And then, of course, if there's a bake-off, he's going to lose that publisher. Publisher's going to go somewhere else because he wants to make more money somewhere else. If every SSP stopped doing this, we're going to actually start showing better ads to users and actually go back to long-term value, which is showing real relevant messages to real people on unique content. Right? And users are going to appreciate that. I don't know about you. When I see a real ad, like a real remarketing message, I appreciate it. You know, sometimes I forget to buy something. I was buying a gift for my wife. I forgot. I added it to my cart. Ooh, thank you. you know, I'm not getting in trouble on my anniversary. Um, <laughs> so the thing is, though, how do you actually get everyone to go do this? Um, and that's one of the key questions. What do we do? How do we actually move forward from here? So, Historically, there's been two things that have pushed us to be better as an industry. And they're not very good things. The first is public opinion, which is people just get so mad about the ads they see that they go and install ad block or pop-up blockers and all these things. And pop-ups are a great example of this. They used to be rampant six, seven years ago. People have gotten so mad at pop-ups that they're now gone. And in the meantime, we've also gotten pretty much every single computer security software vendor to start deleting our cookies. So actually letting public opinion drive what we do had a serious negative impact for us. The other one is, of course, our favorite three-letter agency, not the CIA, the FTC. Um, and when the FTC gets involved, it's also not pretty, right? When they bring out their big guns, they did this against malvertising, they did this against cookies, a lot, number of things. It's also, we lose control. We no longer take control of the change. We get the government imposing this on top of us. And I'm scared because I think 
public opinion or government action is actually pretty imminent, right? Adblock, 50 million installs growing. 5% of browsers have do not track enabled. New IE, new Firefox, I don't know if you guys know this, you can check a box and say, stop tracking me. Now there's no, we don't even have a standard on what to do with that. But public is coming out and crying out saying stop tracking me because you know these behavioral ads are a little creepy sometimes. And then the FTC, they've got a privacy and a piracy initiative. Um, that, those are really scary, right? If they go out and ban cookies like a number of European countries are doing, we could be in serious, serious trouble. So the reason I'm here standing in front of you today is because I think now is the time for all of us to start collaborating, right? This goes back to the prisoner's dilemma. If we all act independently, right, we will lose money and therefore we don't do it. This is, we keep making this decision over and over again. I think it's time for us to start collaborating because we have to have a better ecosystem to get um, what Michael was talking about before, not just backfill and not just direct response. To get brand dollars, we need brand quality inventory. To get brand quality inventory, we've got to raise those CPMs. To raise those CPMs, let's stop spending money on shitty sites. I'm serious. So we started at the IB, we started with piracy, and over the next couple months, you're gonna start seeing AppNexus doing more and more to push money away from misleading ads, bad sites. Um, and this is a big step. You know, we're gonna sacrifice revenue for this, right? Um, and what we'd like to ask all of you is to join us. And what that, does that mean? So I'm saying join us, so you say how. When we come to you over the coming months and ask you, the executives, the CEOs, to make this a priority, don't just punt it to your piracy guy or privacy guy or your general counsel. Make this a strategic priority of your business, right, to make this ecosystem better. Add this to your strategic plan to figure out how to get more money going to better sites so that we all end up with a better ecosystem. And I think if we do that, I guess we're still behind bars, but at least we'll be in prison for less time. Um, so I just want to close it out, right? I, I really, really think that we need to start paying attention to what we're really doing, start paying attention to these short-term decisions, and we need to start looking out for what this ecosystem is going to be in two or three years. We're sitting on an absolutely enormous opportunity to take spend from offline to bring it online, but we first need to be better as an industry. Thank you very much.